Thank you. Uh, I'm delighted each time I speak at the Mises Institute, uh, so I'm delighted this time. Uh, what I wanted to do uh, is, although Road to Serfdom is an extremely very popular book, it sold a great many copies, uh, many people find the book rather abstract, at least in certain parts. So what I want to do is uh, concentrate on what I think is the central argument of the book, which is found in uh, Chapter 5, uh, Planning and Democracy, and Chapter 6, Planning and the Rule of Law. Now, in order to understand uh, what I take to be the central argument of the book, I think we have to see what is the situation that Hayek confronted when he was riding Road to Serfdom. Uh, he was especially concerned that many intellectuals, many people at the time, some of whom were his colleagues, were saying that the old liberties, the, liber the liberties that were characteristic of classical liberalism, such as uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, right to own property, were really either outdated or if not outdated, were not enough that we needed new liberties. Uh, in one footnote in the book, uh, Hayek quotes the famous American historian Carl Becker, who was the author of a famous work on Declaration of Independence, who had a book called New Liberties for Old. Uh, so what the idea uh, was of the people who said this, who said the old liberties of classical liberalism weren't enough, their argument was something like this. They said, well, suppose you have uh, freedom of speech, you have uh, freedom to own property, you have the right, you can live your life as you want, so long as you don't interfere with other people or violate their rights, then what happens if you don't have any money or you're very poor or you're, uh, you suffer from handicaps or you're, you have all, uh, problems? You won't be able to get anywhere. You'll have all these abstract liberties. This is very good, but you're not going to get anywhere. It's necessary that we have each person has to have the ability, it has to be given the means by which he can, he can live a good life. That, uh, and this is, uh, uh, Tom was at mentioning the contemporary relevance, but this is a very influential idea today. For example, we find in the uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, Mark Yassen, has what he calls the capabilities approach, which is exactly what Hayek was talking about. He says that he, what uh, we should do is each person has to be given the capabilities so that he can lead a good life. If he doesn't have, say, the person is handicapped, he needs special benefits that this should be provided to him. So... Hayek is very opposed to this, and he says one of the most dangerous ideas is the substitution of power for liberty, the, the view that instead of having liberty in the sense that each person is free to lead his own life, what we need instead is that each person should have a certain power to be able to lead a good life. And what is it that Hayek finds especially dangerous about this idea? Why is he opposed to it? It seems on the surface, of course, you would, one wouldn't think this if uh, you're thinking from a libertarian background, but it seems on the surface, well, isn't this a good idea? Don't we need to have, uh, if we want to lead a good life, don't we need to have the means to do so? So what's wrong with the giving people the means to lead a good life if they don't have one. This is, say, uh, John Rawls in the most influential of all contemporary books on uh, political philosophy, Theory of Justice, came out in 1971, 
has is he call, he says you have to distinguish between liberty and the worth of liberty. He says what good is liberty if you don't have the means to make use of your liberty? So what Hayek says is how the danger is if you say this, how is it supposed to be, how is it supposed to be realized? How are we supposed to give each person the means to lead a good life? And he says to do this, this will mean planning the economy. That's to say directing the economy in a centralized way. We'll be saying instead of having a free market in which people, each person is leading his own life and people are interacting on the market, we'll have the government telling people what to do. We'll have the government, say, engaged in redistribution so people can have the means to lead a good life. Now, the fundamental problem Hayek finds in this, he says, if you have some view that the uh, the government is going to have a comprehensive economic plan. This supposes that there's a set of values that the government is realizing. There's a particular set of values the government is trying to achieve because, say, the government says uh, people with certain kinds of needs should get extra money. Well, this supposes that the government values that. So he, Hayek has the idea, says that it supposes there's some kind of comprehensive arrangement of all the different values, and the government is trying to achieve that through its plan. But the problem with this is that in a large uh, society, there isn't agreement among people on a particular set of values. People have very different values, and they won't agree with the government on the particular set of values it chooses, or at least a lot of people won't agree. So then what happens if that's the case, that there is a uh, the government says, here is a set of values, we're trying to achieve this, but a lot of people don't agree with this, then he says the government will have to start telling people what to do. The government will have to say, this is what you should do. You must do this. We see this today, say, in the recent, all the recent stories about Obamacare. The government is telling doctors, you must charge such and such amounts for your services. You're telling people you have to purchase certain kinds of health care. You can't purchase the kind you want. And we see it, how this directly affects people's values, say uh, church groups that don't believe in contraception have very difficult times in not putting this in their health plan. The government is telling people specifically what to do and this is Hayek says inevitable because in a in a economic planning the government has to operate from some sort of set of values. Now he says in order to preserve liberty, we can't we can't operate in this fashion where the government is telling particular people what to do. Now one way, a uh, kind of a Rothbardian way of dealing with this would just be to say people have certain natural rights. But Hayek, in his work, like uh, John Stuart Mill, who greatly influenced him, tended to avoid the language of rights. What he said instead was he appealed to what he called the idea of the rule of law. And what he said was, Given that there is this inevitable disagreement among people on values, then the only real way in which uh, people can preserve freedom is that uh, the laws are restricted to general state general requirements that don't mention don't refer to specific people. They just have set general 
uh, requirements of what should be done. So given that there are these general requirements, each person is then free to live his own life. He just has to know, he knows what the general laws are, and then he can try to realize his life according to whatever values he wants. And if that's the case, then if we have a system like that, then people will operate in a free market. And we won't have a comprehensive plan, but there'll be a market instead. So uh, when Hayek, uh, so what Hayek was doing then, he's contrasting this notion of law as general, just giving, allowing people to do uh, what they want within the framework of general laws and law as command to specific people to do something. So he's saying, look, if you favor this idea of, of liberty as power, this very influential idea that says people have to be provided with the means to achieve a good life, then you're going, this will involve this notion of planning which gives you law as specific commands to people and this is inconsistent with liberty. So then after he got this analysis, it wasn't just a, a theoretical point for him. He wanted to apply it to the situation, he, the contemporary situation uh, when he wrote 1944, of course the uh, Britain and America were in a war with Nazi Germany. So what he wanted to do was to argue that the Nazi system, and also he didn't discuss it as much, the communist system, was somewhat, the, the, had its, they both had their origins in this same view that he was criticizing, that's to say that the classical liberal idea of freedom had to be replaced by this new idea that the government should engage in comprehensive planning. And so at the time he was writing, the dominant explanation of fascism and Nazism was a Marxist one that said that uh, the Nazi system is the highest or final stage of capitalism. So Hayek said, no, this is wrong that uh, socialism is really, the, the Nazi system is really the outcome of socialism. And this is what created the greatest controversy in the book, especially in, in uh, Britain and America, that he said that I, the ideas of the left of the so the people who were considered uh, progressive thinkers who would view themselves as anti-fascist were really identical with those that had led to fascism and Nazism, that <clears throat> those systems were also based on the notion of comprehensive planning, and that once you have comprehensive planning, this will lead inevitably to denying people liberty because you will be telling people <clears throat> what to do. And he's, he, he quotes very, he, he said that, he says that there are some of the socialists at one time, socialists had said they're in favor of liberty. They're just wanting to extend liberty to others, but he's able to quote various socialist writers as admitting this. For example, one person, he's, one of his particular targets in the book was someone who was his uh, uh, professor at the LSE at the same time Hayek himself was, Karl Mannheim, who was a Hungarian uh, sociologist who wrote largely in German and then came to the uh, LSE after the rise of the Nazis. So, uh, Hayek quotes very effectively from him Mannheim's statements, well, we have to, uh, you, the liberty isn't all that important. What's really important is that this, we have to have planning. This is the key to things. And incidentally, uh, Mannheim thought that uh, 
uh, Hayek was in a conspiracy against him, and he complained that Hayek and his allies were persecuting him. But all Hayek was doing was very effectively quoting him. And <laughs> I guess he didn't like that. There, there was one other critic who uh, was also a professor of political science, uh, uh, Herbert Feiner, who wrote a reply to Hayek called a short book called The Road to Reaction, in which he described, calls the book, uh, Road to Serfdom, the reactionary's Mein Kampf. <laughs> now, Hayek wasn't very happy about that. And I think he broke off personal relations with Feiner, but he told me uh, that he, what Feiner was really upset was when he had a quarrel with Harold Lasky, who was a professor of political science at the LSE, who had views diametrically opposed to Hayek. So Hayek said, well, he took it, he, he attacked him. He was really uh, angry at Lasky, but he took it out on Hayek instead. So it just, it didn't, it, that was, uh, but the, the socialists di generally didn't take Hayek's message in very good spirit, but they really didn't have an answer to it because I think Hayek had showed very effectively that it wasn't a matter of what they uh, they 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 thought they were aiming for. Some of them had thought they were trying to advance freedom, but because their policies inevitably involved directing people what to do, they were inconsistent with freedom. And I'll just end up one point. Hayek has, I think, also a very good point in the book is that he says in this so-called new idea that the socialists had of freedom, they were in effect going back to the uh, conservatism of the old regime, which was one of, uh, again, telling people what to do and distrustful of human freedom. And he points out, say, the parallels between the socialists and the policies of uh, Otto von Bismarck who's not usually viewed as a left-wing progressive in Germany. So what Hayek is, is really arguing is that the, the, the movement for socialism, the so-called new freedom that socialism is going to give, is not really a freedom, but is a return to the, is a progress toward totalitarianism and a return to the... Uh, past societies from which classical liberalism was trying to liberate people. Uh, thank you.